it's all coming into focus. And while at the macro level, it's all about the ecosystem, zoom into that Tensor G2 and the fine details become clear. Better processing, faster processing, with the goal being better low light photos and better video than we had in the Pixel 6 series and a smarter smartphone overall. But does the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro deliver on the notion of a more powerful, more cohesive, Google-controlled Android experience than the Pixel 6 series did? To find out, I began my testing at a local Halloween haunt, same as last year. So last year I found myself in a very similar situation, except we were reviewing the Pixel 6. This year, we're looking at the Pixel 7, but unlike last year, where the most relevant comparison was the old in the Pixel 5 being compared to everything new in the Pixel 6, this year is a refinement and upgrade on what they started with the Pixel 6 series in the Pixel 7. So instead of comparing the video and photos from the Pixel 6 to the Pixel 7, I'm comparing tonight the Pixel 7 Pro to the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. So that's what we're gonna see in this review. Along with a myriad other things, we're gonna test the audio. I'm gonna see if they finally got it right and you can get bit perfect audio directly out of the phone. We're gonna show video samples, night mode samples, everything that's new with Pixel 7 Pro. And I've got that all for you coming up right after the graphic. Let's get to that. Stop, hold up, let me just tell you real quick, this is gonna be a long one, so you can go ahead and hit those chapter markers below to skip around to the different content that's most important to you or watch straight through. Do you, boo, whatever you choose. So what do you get in this year's Pixel 7 Pro over the Pixel 6 Pro? Refinement. The 6 series was the beginning of a new era for Google smartphone hardware with new cameras and a new in-house processor, the Tensor chip. This year, the Pixel 7 series is mated to the second generation, the Tensor G2, and it is a beast. But one note I think is worth diving into first uh, is that these are in fact phones. These are actually capable of making phone calls. And so one must ask, is this a camera that makes calls or a phone with a camera? When you look at the pains Google has gone through to make that calling experience better, that's a tough question to answer. This year, they've worked on the in-call noise canceling so that when you're listening to a caller, they sound clear. With call quality being so reliant on connections, it's, it's gonna be tough for me to test that out. Oh, and yeah, the feature won't hit the phone until later this year, but I did get into another feature. One not turned on by default that I can guarantee you'll want to activate right now. When you go into your phone and dial up a place like Home Depot, the Pixel's AI is great at telling you how long you'll likely be waiting on hold and even getting you right to a chat if that option is available. But if you go into the settings, you can now use Direct My Call to see menu options ahead of having to listen through all of them and get right where you need to go. This doesn't work with all toll-free national numbers here in the US, but Google says they're working on expanding the list of ones that do. Personally, I think that Google's stock Android on the Pixel has the best phone app of any modern mobile operating system. And there are a lot of features available to users which have been around prior to the Pixel 7 Pro, but the Pixel phones took much of that artificial intelligence and machine learning to the next level with the Pixel 6, 6 Pro and Tensor, and now with Tensor G2. But the G2 isn't the only piece of hardware to consider here. The display on the Pixel 7 and Pro answers a major complaint I had with the 6 series, and that is screen brightness. I can't say that I wasn't a bit let down by the max brightness previously, but this year's 7 series is bright and easily readable in that high noon California sun when you have adaptive brightness turned on, maxing out at 1400 nits on the 7 and 1500 nits on the 7 Pro. Just go outside from being indoors and you'll see that max brightness ramp up. Using the Pixel 7 Pro, this is one of the rare times I've actually kept a phone on adaptive brightness 
rather than manual. I generally don't like how dim the screen can get, but the adaptive brightness this year has been a pleasant experience for me. And something not often talked about is wireless radios. In this case, the NFC or near field communications radio inside the Pixel 7 Pro. I have no objective test here or a comparison, but it feels like Google Pay has been faster and I haven't had to physically tap a terminal often being a few inches away from it when it recognizes a contact and transmits my payment info. I noticed that the first time I used pay. It pinged before I got as close as I'm used to getting. Then I started paying attention to how far away it was when it was connecting. Nice touch. And the fact, you know, it's authenticated with your fingerprint makes it harder for people who are close to you to sniff it out and all that stuff. But that's a whole video for another time. The, the, the body of the phone has all the power buttons on the right side, power and volume. You get stereo speakers, one on the bottom, second one in the earpiece, USB-C, in-display fingerprint scanner, which is fast and works consistently once you get the cadence down. And at the opposite end of the screen is a hole punch front facing camera whose portrait mode does the most impressive cutout of Villain McBeard faces beard that I've seen on a smartphone this year. Google's use of AI is immaculate in that regard. And that front facer now supports 4K at 60 frames per second and face unlock, which works in tandem with the fingerprint unlock. Yes, that's right, face unlock is back. The SIM tray is on the left and the pixels support both physical and one eSIM slot. And let me just give a nod to the design touches on this year's phones. I'm absolutely smitten with this lemongrass color and I love the hazel from what I've seen on the web and the body design with the camera module flowing into the sides of the phone instead of looking like a separate unit is a beautifully fluid touch, though I liked the 6's design where it looks like a separate module just as much. Even though the 7 Pro has a curved screen, I still find it a delight to use. The 7 has a flat display which some might find creates a sharp edge in hand feel, but for the size of my hands this really wasn't an issue. And this 6.7 inch QHD plus LTPO OLED display is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I'd say it is one of the best looking displays I've reviewed this year. It can scale up to 120 hertz and content is just vibrant, balanced and smoothed on it. The Pixel 7 features a 6.3 inch 90 hertz full HD plus display that is equally nice in its own right and is more than enough display for most users. My blue light addled eyes prefer the larger display, but you do you boo. Content on either display is engaging. The black levels and the dark spots of The Witcher looked really good. Yasie, Yasuke in the shadows had his skin tone and hair looking great and vibrant without compromising the black level in the shadows. Thor Ragnarok, Surtur's flames are lively and our planet coastal seas, my turtle and his clownfish and eel friends were beautifully reproduced without blowing out the bright spots in the water at the top of the image. And listening was just as pleasant an experience. At just shy of seven inches wide in landscape mode, the seven pros speakers give good sound separation when listening to Art Blakey's moaning and the Doors' Riders on the Storm remastered. Unfortunately though, a quick check of bit output with my toppings amp and I found that stock Android still doesn't output bit perfect audio unless I'm using USB Audio Player Pro. It will downsample your high res files to CD quality. Now if you're going to binge for hours on end from your phone, one thing to note, the battery life. My overall experience with the Pixel 7 Pro was extremely positive but the battery life did leave me wanting a bit or charging. I was getting 14 to 16 hours off charger with around five hours screen time before killing it. Not bad per se, but not the best of the phones I've tested this year. Though I'm only a week in and with Google's AI, optimizing could get me more life, but the good news is that this 5,000 milliamp hour battery can get to roughly 50% charge in 30 minutes when using a 30 watt or higher USB PD 3.0 charger. That's good for smartphones sold in the US. 
The phone also supports wireless charging up to 23 watts with Google's second gen Pixel Stand up to 12 watts with other aftermarket wireless chargers. I'll be addressing some of these insights on the Pixel 7 in a future video focused only on this device. The refined camera module this year is still Jordi LaForge chic, but without the contrasting trim around the top and bottom, and the lens cutouts are a bit different, as is what's inside. If you want the hard numbers, after watching this, go ahead and check out Harris's excellent review where he details the megapixels and, and sensor sizes and, and sensor micron sizes, et cetera, et cetera. For the 7 Pro, I'm going to show you here and now the end result of those upgrades, which include a new image signal processor, 4K video at 60 frames per second across all lenses, 10-bit HDR video upgraded, telephoto optics, and this cinematic blur I'm about to hit you with, among other things. And getting back to those cameras, most smartphones these days do a pretty solid job outdoors in really good lighting, but I took the phones, as I showed you, out at night at Night of the Jacks in Calabasas, California to see if the Pixel 7 Pro's updated camera hardware really stood up to uh, the time they put into it and compared that to the S22 Ultra. As you'll see in these still photos, where it really shows up though is in the video I shot that night and in the now official macro mode. So I caught a moment before I shot that Knights of the Jack event stand up at the beginning of this review and it tells the tale and really drives the point home. Look at that sign there in the background. The pixel video is much sharper than the S22 Ultra. And when you zoom into this night mode photo of this lawn installation with the signage way off in the background, you can see that the lettering is sharper and a bit better exposed from the pixel. Not by much, but there is a difference. And rounding off these night sight images and videos, here's a snowblower. Again, the difference in the image details, the contrast, the sharpness of the snowflakes is quite apparent, and Pixel 7 Pro has that crispy video advantage here. When shooting these night sight photos with the Pixel 7 Pro, the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max I had on me at that night the Tensor G2's power was apparent. When you shoot a night photo, depending on which phone you use, you'll see some sort of progress bar and message telling you to hold the phone still while it captures that low light image. The Pixel's captures happen much faster than last year, faster than the S22 Ultra, but just slower slightly than the 14 Pro Max and wielding its A16 Bionic. Moving away from night side stills, some of y'all lost it last year when I talked about macro photography on the Pixel 6 Pro, which didn't officially support it. Now that the 7 Pro does, the 7 Pro only, feast your eyes on this. Here's a picture of the fly. You are about to go beyond that limit. No, 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 no. Not Jeff Goldblum. Just regular old Frank the fly. Here's the full frame macro, and here's a crop to get you a bit closer look at all those details. Again, even when I cropped it. And a night photo macro, which is difficult in low light. Pixel pulls it off like a champ. And my favorite macro, or my favorite two macros I took this time around, ants in motion are darn near impossible to catch with a smartphone. Not perfect, but I'll take it. And this flower with the semi-closed bud I really love the color and detail in this image. But let's zoom out a bit, shall we? And even though right now we're looking at a video comparison of the ultra wide cameras between the Pixel 7 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, what I really wanted to do was take a look at the still photography, that 2X and 5X telephoto. So what better contest than to pit that against uh, Apple's iPhone 14 Pro Max? So. This stop sign you see here, I shot at 2X and 5X with both cameras. The Pixel 7 Pro, uh, it, it compares, it's comparable to what Apple did with their 2X. The difference is that what Google does is they take and mesh the wide and telephoto lenses to give you the best images possible at those ranges. Apple took the 48 megapixel sensor cropped in and gave you the 2X. So again, here's the 2X. Here's the 5X. 
Which one do you think looks better between the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Personally, I don't see a huge winner between the two. They both look pretty solid, even when you zoom in and look at the details. A quick side note with the video options. If you noticed a bit of judder in the night side videos, that's that like around the edges of objects, it, 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 it does like a little bit of ghosting, a little blurring. Uh, that's because I was shooting in standard video stabilization mode. The phone offers three other stabilization modes with three or four capable of shooting 4K. The action mode will get rid of the judder, but it shoots in 1080p HDR, not 4K. One of the most impressive features I've played with on the Pixel 7 this year is Photo Unblur, which is actually done through the Photos app. It works on any photos you've taken with the phone, but what's impressive is that it'll work on any photo you import or have in your library, no matter which device it comes from. Here's a picture from several years ago that I've been annoyed with for quite some time. Back when I used to host a celebrity fan chat, Sean Bean came through uh, one day and hadn't seen his Winter's Coming meme online yet, so I showed it to him. Geek cred. Then we took a photo, but as you can see, it came out blurry. Thanks to Google's AI and machine learning, I now have a sharp, crispy keepsake that winter is of course coming and for him it already came because he lost his head. This is pretty darn impressive. Caveat mTOR though. Some of my colleagues here at Android Central did have mixed results with photos in their libraries. At launch, this feature is available only on the 7 series. And a final note on video, as good as it was at night, it hunts for iris in the daytime in some scenarios. So at times, you'll have some blown out video until it adjusts and compensates for changing daylight conditions. And wrapping things up, let's take a look at a few other AI and machine learning driven features. Guided frame is an accessibility feature which allows those who are vision impaired to take a selfie. After turning on talkback mode and activating the talkback shortcut, you open the camera and long press the front facing camera button, then you double tap it to press it. Now you just follow the voice, audio and haptic prompts to take a selfie. It'll guide you to getting you in the center of the shot. And voice typing now supports emoji suggestions. If you don't know the name, you can say something like elated emoji and the top suggestion will be inserted, but the pixel will also give you alternative suggestions. Now, there are also some other fitness or health related odds and ends, but I'm going to share those when I take a look at the Pixel Watch. Things like the ability to detect coughing and snoring while you sleep. The Pixel line is meant to showcase the best that Google has to offer. The best of Android, in this case, Android 13 with three years worth of updates and five years worth of security patches. With, with that software, with Android 13 performing the way the folks envision it in Mountain View. And with the Pixel 7 series and the Pixel 7 Pro specifically, I'd have to say achievement unlocked. In the past, I may have gone back to other devices as my daily driver after my Pixel reviews, but this time, I think I'm gonna sit with this one for a while, especially now that the circle is complete with the Pixel Watch. More on that soon. Who knows, it may be my new walking around phone because like my man's Gator, it's never been about the name or the clout chasing. You, you feel me? Gator never been about that. It's always been about function and everything about this phone so far has been on point. I'd like to see the base models begin at 256 gigs of storage but at this price point of $900 for the Pixel 7 Pro and $600 for the Pixel 7, when compared to the competition, I don't think you'll find a better Android device with this level of features at $600. And at $900, you're gonna be thinking real hard about paying one to $300 more for competing flagships. The 7 series is actually very easy to recommend. And I'll have more to say about the seven in a future video, but that's it for this novel of a video. If you're still here, I thank you for watching. If you watched in pieces and made it to the end, I appreciate your discipline. If you have any questions about the Pixel 7 or the 7 Pro or the Pixel Watch I'm working on right now, go ahead and leave those in the comments below and I'll get to them. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central don't take it lightly that you spent this chunk of time here with us watching this review. I'll catch you on the Pixel, I mean, 
the next video. Yeah, it'll probably be the Pixel Watch.